Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Freedom Above Fortune radio show. I am the agent for truth, Joe Bannister, your host. Happy Saturday morning to you. It's my honor and privilege to be with you, and I thank you for joining me. You're listening to me on Frank Talk 104.3 FM, as well as worldwide on the Internet, courtesy of Liberty Works Radio Network. Tell your friends they can listen to this great network and support it by visiting lwrn.net. Liberty Works Radio Network brings you radio programming you will not hear anywhere else. When you visit lwrn.net, please consider clicking on the Join Donate button in the upper left-hand corner of the homepage. While you're at the website, you can check out the promotional video near the bottom of the homepage, and you can see what many of the Liberty Works Radio Network talk show hosts actually look like, including myself. Given the many blessings that God has bestowed on our country, I dedicate every show to our Father in Heaven. So I always start the show by praying as Jesus instructed us in Matthew chapter 6. Our Father, who art in Heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in Heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Well, our country is in deep trouble, as I know many of my listeners are well aware, and I urge everyone to fervently pray for God's blessings on our country. Let's redouble our efforts to obey His commandments, especially refraining from taking the Lord's name in vain. I invite you to join my email list by visiting my website at freedomabovefortune.com. That's freedomabovefortune.com or agentfortruth.com. At freedomabovefortune.com, you can click on the mailing list option on the left-hand side of the home page, and you can join my email mailing list to keep up on the latest information. I always encourage listeners to have a paper and pen handy to copy down important information. Try to make every show as informative as possible. For those that are new to the show, I'm a former special agent with the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation Division. I no longer work for the IRS because during the last two years of my service there, I performed an off-duty investigation into claims that the income tax laws did not actually require most Americans to file federal income tax returns and pay federal income tax, and that the IRS was actually deceiving the American public about their true income tax obligations. After gathering and analyzing a mountain of evidence, I concluded that these claims about the federal income tax system were largely true. When I asked my IRS supervisors to discuss my conclusions with me, they not only refused to have any discussions with me, but they also encouraged me to resign from the agency. My IRS career came to an end rather abruptly in 1999, when I did resign from the Internal Revenue Service and I've been speaking about my experiences and conclusions regarding the federal income tax and liberty-related matters ever since. It was actually a biography, a limited biography of myself at agentfortruth.com. You can check that out. I'm also featured in a film called America, Freedom to Fascism, a film that went viral on the Internet because of the provocative look the film takes at the Federal Reserve and the federal income tax systems. I highly recommend watching the film as soon as possible. You can type in the words America, Freedom to Fascism into any search engine to watch the movie for free, or you can go to freedomtofascism.com. My guest this morning is George Shepard. He's the publisher of Republic Magazine, and he has many other uh, projects that he's into. Uh, He's extremely knowledgeable about uh, the Internet and how it can be used to spread the truth. Uh, I guess the internet can be used to spread lies as well, but uh, (laughs) he focuses and his expertise is on spreading the truth. George, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, Could you please maybe start with uh, telling the listeners a little bit about yourself and um, a little bit about Republic Magazine and, of course, some of these other uh, projects, because I'm I'm always fascinated when I talk with you, and I, I know the listeners will be too as they listen. Okay, uh, well, let's see, where do we start here? 
Republic Magazine, we started the magazine back in uh, 2007. Uh, it launched on July 4th, 2007. And um, it came out of uh, me watching American Freedom of Fascism. And that movie was really an eye-opener for me. And it really inspired me enough to just say, I have to do something. And um, when I launched the magazine, it came out of looking deeply into, the, into this, uh, I would just like to use terms of business, into this market that... Uh, is out there, you know, around spreading the truth, about telling the, talking about government cover-ups and stuff that's really happening, the stuff that you don't get on the mainstream news. And the stuff that I saw out there, like uh, whether they be little flyers or newsletters or conspiratorial theory kind of publications, they weren't real professionally done. They were kind of done on home computers and uh, with cut-and-paste things on photocopy machines. You know, maybe that's creative enough, but uh, I thought that that wouldn't actually probably turn a lot of people on to the message and actually what's going on out there. So uh, I decided to put a slick, um, professional, kind of commercial look and feel to the actual magazine itself to where, to where people can actually absorb this information just as they would anything when they pick up on the newsstand. And the idea with that was to basically pull people in with what they're already used to being uh, marketed with, but instead of giving them stuff that's not true or incorrect, we're giving them the truth and uh, just packaging it so it's got a nice pretty bow on it so it's a little bit easier for people to pick it up and actually believe it instead of looking at it and say, oh, I don't know about if I can believe this. Because sometimes when you see things that don't look really professionally done, the first thing that comes across my mind is, you know, is this information really accurate? If they didn't take the time to really focus on the aesthetics and making it look good, is this information really true and correct? So that's what I wanted to do is put a nice, clean, um, professional, I don't want to necessarily say a real commercial look, but... At least, the, at least commercially acceptable look to this information that, um, that we're involved in spreading out there. So that's kind of how we got started with Republic Magazine. Um, as far as other projects, I mean, we've done so many different things uh, springing outside of that. Like we did the, uh, the Ron Paul stamp, which was the, the little ink stamp, or maybe you guys have seen that or maybe even purchased one. Um, they basically said Ron Paul for president. We did that, same, and we said stamp your money, stamp everything. Uh, we were sending out at one time, I think, two or three hundred of those stamps a week uh, during the campaign, which was really great. And I'm pretty excited that Ron Paul is going to be um, uh, running again in 2012. So that means we can go ahead and get those stamps um, juiced up and, and ready to go and maybe even get started earlier this year than we did last time with that. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, amongst other things, there's a lot of other projects that we do, but we try to keep things fairly focused around, you know, what we excel in, which is delivering information to people and delivering correct information that's been researched and um, it's true and, and things like that. So, in a nutshell, we're kind of information delivery. Uh, we're an information delivery conduit, if you say, could say that. <laughs> that sounds good. Now, how could people um, get a hold of a copy of the magazine or, or talk about your website uh, for the magazine? Okay, uh, it's real easy. If you go to republicmagazine.com, there's a couple neat things that we do. The first thing is the magazine's a hybrid, meaning that we come out with a digital and a print version of the publication. The print version is actually out in the newsstands. It's in Barnes & Nobles and um, Books a Million and several other uh, newsstands around the country. We have about a little over 5,000 uh, copies got every month to the newsstands. So we've got that, and you can pick it up on the newsstand. But you can also go to the website, which is republicmagazine.com, and if you want to try the magazine out, all you got to do is sign up for the digital subscription, which is free. We actually will give you the ability to download every previous version of the magazine we've ever done and read it or print it out online so that there's nothing that's left um, to waste. A lot of magazines will, will go out of print on a particular issue, and uh, what will happen then is you won't be able to get any copies of the magazine. But we've actually produced everything in both a digital and a print hybrid so that you can always go back and use the information for research um, and just to get yourself caught up on the issues. So if you subscribe for the free digital edition, you'll be taken to a one-time offer page, which will allow you to try the magazine out for buck seventy-six, which is the cost of the shipping. So uh, it gives people a chance to, to dig into their pocket, pull out two bucks, and uh, you get, get a chance to get a physical copy of the magazine. And if you like it, um, you just it's twenty-four ninety-five for the full year, and that's uh, 12 issues, and it's, it's a piece of cake. That sounds really good, and I, I could uh, plug the, uh, I know at least twice since the magazine has um, been in existence, you've had a, a tax uh, edition that mm -hmm. I think came up around April 15th or prior to April 15th, and so I would certainly encourage people uh, to go for that free digital uh, offer, 
and get started because uh, you know you have some really good articles, including one I wrote myself. Um, it gives people a good you know summary of uh, why we're so uh, concerned about the the federal income tax system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't want to really keep people out of the loop because right now, especially in this financial time, there's a lot of folks that they want to get active, but they really don't have the means. Or whereas before, everyone had the means, but they didn't have the time. Now more people have time than they have the means. So by using the digital edition, uh, you can actually print out articles. So say, for example, you go to a workplace or someplace where there might be um, folks uh, that maybe sit and wait, like waiting areas. You can actually print certain articles out from any of those digital editions, and you can leave copies of them there. Um, or you can just pass them out and hand them to some of the friends that you might have. Uh, you can even send them through the mail in a normal envelope for, was it, 46, 48 cents or something? I forgot what the, uh, the postage is. But um, we didn't want to make sure that we want to make sure that everyone can participate in the dissemination of this information. Uh, we've had in the past the ability for people to buy the magazines in activist bulk stacks, so you can get the magazines for a buck a piece. I don't know anybody out there that has a magazine that will sell you copies for a dollar a piece. We basically just try to cover our cost on that, so that folks can actually get those magazines and drop them off in those waiting areas, or pass them out to friends and family when they meet them for the holidays or such. Uh, it's a great way to start a conversation and um, also make sure that everyone can be involved and it's not uh, a pay-to-play game where you have to buy something in order to you know, help spread the truth. You can actually just go there and download stuff for free and print it on your own computer if you need to or forward it via email. Do you recall, uh, well, I'm sure you recall some, at least some of the topics uh, from the past that might uh, interest people? Because I remember uh, stories on, uh, you know, about food, uh, you know, fluoride, um, you know, the tax issue, certainly the money issue, uh, the Constitution, um, any other issues you can think of? Well, I just pulled out my stack of magazines. Because <laughs> I keep everything. I keep a couple copies here on my desk. Um, the latest issue we just did was on the um, Articles of Freedom, which is really important for people to read, and we can get into that uh, after the break, possibly. But we did, uh, just previous to that, we did something on the North American Union. We did a whole uh, magazine about the Second American Revolution. We did uh, Blueprint to Restore America. We did uh, vaccines and fluoride and uh, the cancer myth. Uh, we also did stuff on the uh, Second Amendment, Homeland Security, and militias. Uh, we've gone back to the media. We've done things on uh, government uh, suppression of new new types of energy, whether it be solar or perpetual energy or, you know, Tesla's different types of energy things. We've even gone into 9-11 and did a really spectacular issue, in my opinion, on all the details of 9-11 and, of course, all the tax issues as well. Um, we've, we've gone all the way back to do the real ID and, and uh, surveillance technologies. I mean, really, the key to this, since there's so much information, is to jump onto our, our website and just look at the covers, look at the magazines and the contents that are listed there and get an idea of what, uh, what we're all about. And just at that point, go ahead and download some magazines and start reading it. I mean, there's more information than you could probably absorb in a short period of time uh, just on the, on the website alone. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you gave out that litany, I mean, there's just a – incredible amount of uh, subject matter and it's you know not all focused on just one issue uh, although you know maybe the issue of uh, freedom and liberty and um, having our government abide by the constitution and uh, not lie to us might be a, a recurring theme um, well our guest is George Shepard he's the publisher of Republic magazine and I thought it'd be uh, very important to have him on uh, I'm a subscriber to the magazine, and I've been, uh, at least for a couple of years, um, been reading it uh, every time it comes out. It's kind of one of those things, uh, I guess we're getting we're getting old, George, where we actually, you know, the magazine comes in the mail. I mean, so much is digital now, uh, but we still get that, uh, that thrill of getting a new magazine and getting to find time to read it. Um, but it's also digital, digital too. So, like you said, a hybrid, uh, something for everyone. So, anyway, guest is George Shepard, and this is the Freedom Above Fortune Radio Show. And we'll be right back after these messages. We really appreciate you joining us, joining us, joining us, joining us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second segment of the first hour of the Freedom Above Fortune Radio Show. My name is Joe Bannister, the Agent for Truth, your host. Uh, my websites are freedomabovefortune.com and agentfortruth.com. 
My guest is George Shepard. He's the, among other things, the publisher of Republic Magazine. And the magazine's been around since uh, mid-2007, so uh, it's been around quite a while. And it's really a, f a phenomenal magazine. I'm a subscriber myself, and I wanted to have the publisher on to tell you more about the magazine so you can uh, check it out for yourself. Um, George was going to talk a little bit more about the most recent issue. And so, George, uh, you have the floor. Great. Um, it's really important to me to highlight some of the people that are doing, doing extraordinary things. We talk a lot about the founders um, being ordinary men who were able to do extraordinary things. And there's, there are people, there are modern-day founders right now. And Joe, it, I believe, is one of them. Uh, there's another one that happened uh, that put an event on last year called the Conroe Congress, and some of you have possibly heard about this. And if you haven't, you should check out the website at cc2009.us. Uh, when this country was formed and we started putting together the Articles of Confederation and they came out with the idea of coming together with a constitution, um, they, came in, they went into this Continental Congress first to address some issues uh, before they even started writing or, or drafting constitutions and, and such. Uh, it was all the founding and building blocks of this country. And the Continental Congress that happened in, in uh, St. Charles last fall was a monumental uh, occasion for the liberty movement in general. Anyone that loves freedom and wants to protect their rights. Because the things that were addressed, there was an actual election that happened um, that was uh, – three, three debt delegates were uh, elected from each of the states with a paper ballot election, um, all legal. And they all converged at this particular time. Some people have asked you know, about this Continental Congress thing. Like, well, I didn't know this happened. Why was, was I really represented? And the thing you've got to remember is back in the colonial days when they had the first two Continental Congresses back then, um, they went through the same process. Most of the people, I think probably close to 80 percent of the people were loyal to Britain. They were loyalists. They didn't want to cause any trouble. So a small group of people from the colonies were elected among the colonies, and most people didn't even know this was happening. Uh, they knew that there was talk about it, but they didn't know what was going on. So the same exact situation we had then in the, early, in the uh, late 1700s before you know, we uh, basically announced our independence it has just happened again this year. But, but not instead of announcing our independence, it's all about protecting our independence. We have the same tyrant government now that we had 230-some-odd years ago uh, that is oppressing the people again. So we need to keep and make sure that the Constitution that we have is protected because it really it holds a lot of our freedoms in, um, in trust. And that's what's really amazing about that document. And it took them months and months and months to draft the original Constitution. They tried it a few times. They had different options of it. And they even went uh, as far as to include the Bill of Rights, which the Bill of Rights, if no one really knows this, those are amendments to the Constitution. So they actually created the Constitution, and then they realized that that wasn't even enough. They had to further protect their rights and create amendments. Uh, some people don't even know that that's actually that, how the Bill of Rights came about. But um, out of this Continental Congress that happened last year, there was an article that was drafted. Uh, I would just say an article like a magazine article, but a document called the Articles of Freedom. The Articles of Freedom basically outlines the, uh, I think it's 14 different abuses of the federal government. The actions that the federal and state legislatures need to put into practice immediately to uh, keep and protect the rights of the people. And if they don't, what are the recommended civic actions that the people will take in order to enforce those rights? Because you've got to think this. It's been used in many uh, defense cases that, oh, I was just following orders. Well, through the Nuremberg trials, they basically said that you can't use that as a defense. You know what's right and what's wrong. The problem is uh, a lot of people just don't – they try to blame it on someone else. We've already told the elected officials, this is what you're doing wrong. You can't use this as a defense anymore, that you're just following orders, you're just following – this law here is repugnant to the Constitution, but it's law, so I have to follow it. Uh, what we're trying to get across to people, these, these elected officials is, look, you're trampling on our rights, just like the king did uh, 230 years ago, and the same exact thing is going to happen. If you don't want blood in the streets, then – you need to fix this problem. You know, you're actually going against your own law because when the First Amendment, which, which was put into the uh, Constitution, the Bill of Rights, it doesn't work, and that's the freedom of speech and the freedom to redress uh, grievances and such. If that doesn't work, what's the next amendment that they've got? They've got the Second Amendment. 
So if the freedom of speech no longer uh, holds true as far as keeping our liberties and our freedom, the only sec- the second thing we've got is the guns. And if they're trying to take away the guns, that tells you exactly what their thoughts are. You know, they're no- they know what's going to happen. It's just a matter of if they can try to curtail it. And if you take a real good look at the planks of the Communist Manifesto, every single one of those planks are now in American society and American law. We do not live in a republican form of government. We don't live in a democracy. We actually live in a um, in a communist or you know a socialist state. That's where we're at right now. So anyone that says we still live in a republic, um, I would challenge that at this point. If you really take a good look at the definition of a republic, and you also take a look at the definition of socialism or communism. So the Articles of Freedom was an amazing thing, and we actually did a whole issue about that, and that's our current issue that's on the newsstand right now. Uh, it actually just shipped out, uh, I think it was last week, to the newsstand. And you can also pick it up online and read it online, and it's phenomenal. We try to condense down this uh, like 60- or 70-page document into bite-sized chunks that really took um, the details of what happened in the First Continental Congress to set the stage of the abuses in- itself, why we needed to have one. And then going into this Continental Congress, like why exactly are we where we're at today? We also took some delegate remarks, the people that actually attended this Continental Congress, and they said you know, what, what they thought about it, how the experience was to them. So you can get a first-hand feel and you can connect with some of the representatives, maybe even from your home states, um, to realize that they're people just like us. The folks that I met at the Continental Congress were not, they're not career politicians. Actually, I don't know of any, maybe one politician, uh, which is like a local state government. Everyone else came from all walks of life. I mean, there was people that lived in uh, cities or people that lived in rural regions, but they all had one uh, commonality, and that was they wanted to preserve and protect the freedoms that we have and also the Constitution. And uh, it was just a phenomenal experience. So I would recommend anyone that gets a chance to to go over to that website, um, republicmagazine.com, and read that particular uh, magazine, issue number 19. That's the newest one on the uh, Articles of Freedom. Uh, there's also something that's going to be coming up called the Liberty Walk, and there's a website you can go to um, later on that's called libertywalk.us. On the 20th, 24th of October, which is a Sunday, people are going to be gathering all over the country in different locations in order to uh, basically walk for the Constitution to show our numbers. And also it's a great opportunity for people to network. I think in general there's not enough networking that goes on in the movement itself. There's a lot of lone wolves out there that uh, just want to be – you know, left alone. You know, I wouldn't say hermits, but you know, that kind of mentality. You know, just leave me alone. The government leave me alone. Everyone leave me alone. I just want to live my life and be happy that way. You know what? That's your that's your God given right. You know, these are rights that cannot be given by man, and they cannot be taken away by man either. So uh, this Liberty Walk is a great way to network. And if you can attend this thing, and this is going to be in all the different cities, LibertyWalk.us is the website. That's where they're starting the organization of that. Then I definitely recommend doing that, and that's on the 24th of October. However, if you can't, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually get active and start networking um, using the Internet. Now, some people, they say, Internet, from Internet, I don't know, you know how to do all this stuff. Um, and they're a little bit afraid of computers, like it's going to reach out and suck them in, like the, the movies that we've seen in the past, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like Tron and those types of things. Right. But um, it's really not. It's really a great networking connection tool. And I wanted to just quickly expand on some of the uh, different ways that folks can get active, and they can be anonymous. Uh, you, there's some anonymity that you can still have, even though people say right now that the Internet, there's, there's no protection for your anonymity. But that's not true. And I'm going to show you some really neat things. Most people know about Facebook. Facebook is kind of like it's the younger generation's um, party line in a way. You know, we used to have the party lines. You'd call on the phone, and you'd talk to people all over the country or the world. And the way this is now is you can actually go there and you can connect and you can have friends and you can talk and you can uh, kind of spill your guts about what you believe. And uh, while it's public information, it also allows you to connect with other people of like minds. You can send out a quick email to your friends and say, hey, join me on Facebook, and then their friends will find you and then their friends of their friends will find you based on just doing surfing through the web. And it's a great way to start connecting with other people. Uh, another way is to set up your own website. And I've created a course that will actually take you through the process of setting up your own blog website for free. Well, I shouldn't say for free. You've got to still pay for hosting and your domain name, which is only like 10 or 20 bucks. But you can actually get yourself your own website on the Internet to talk about the things that interest you the most. Again, the more of this information that we have out there, when you do searches, just for example, before I started the magazine, I told you guys I watched Freedom to Fascism. I watched that movie on YouTube. 
And I was just searching for something. I don't remember what it was. And I saw something on YouTube. I think I was lo- looking for some drum stuff. And I saw something about the income tax. So I just I clicked on that link, and I went through all these little income tax things, and I found Freedom to Fascism. That movie was almost two hours long. And I sat there, and I watched that until like 1 or 2 in the morning. I couldn't even – I couldn't stop watching it. And I was so inspired at the end. Like that one thing that was done on the Internet inspired me to create a magazine where – the little contribution that I could give has been able to touch hundreds of thousands of people, and that's my one thing. So imagine what you can do if you go out there and you put a little bit of information, a little bit of uh, energy into just trying to wake up a few people because you don't know who you're going to wake up. That next person that could, you're going to wake up could reach out to literally a million people or a thousand people or even five people, and it works into, as like a viral thing. The more people you connect with, the more people that um, that wake up that – spread this message it just it keeps going and keeps keeps going and that's what we need to realize that we need to use these tools that have been given to us i mean they've basically been given to us on a silver platter to really affect change in this country and to wake up as many people as you can if you know this information if you know the truth if you've read it and you've researched it then you have a moral in my opinion a moral obligation to pass that information along you can't just hoard that knowledge because hoarding that knowledge is not going to do anything for anyone including yourself because when the powers that be to come down and say, look, we're going to step on your neck again with our jackboots and say, this is the way it's going to be. You know, you have no say about it. If you want to come against us, we're going to put you in jail. Like so many of the people that have gone to jail um, in the past just from speaking out about something they believe in. Okay, Ed and Lane Brown, Sherry Jackson, you know, all these people, good people that just wanted to be left alone. That found something that uh, shocked them that the federal government was abusing their rights and their privileges granted by the people. And when they brought that to the attention of the government, or when the government came after them, guess what happened? Well, the jackboots went down their necks again, and just another person went to jail. So if more people are educated on these subjects, then that doesn't happen as much. Look at all the taser videos on the Internet. Um, People getting tased for no reason. When you see these things pop up on YouTube and such, 10 years ago, these law enforcement officers that um, abused their powers, no one would ever know about it. You could plant guns and drugs on people, and it was just a common thing. But it just happened, you know, no one ever find out. But with the advent of the Internet, if you act wrong and it goes out to hundreds of thousands of people, you can expect to either be reprimanded, fired, or worse. And that's the only protection we really have is being able to connect with other folks and say, look, we're not going to take this anymore. And that's one of the reasons why I really stand behind you know, using the Internet as a tool if you have the skills to, to just go on the line and, and, and post some things. It doesn't take a lot of uh, effort to do that. But the website that I created for uh, going there, and you can take this free course. It's called the Five Data Freedom Course. You can go to tacticalprofits.com. It's a big, it's a big uh, online course that I put together teaching people what it is that I do, which is you know starting businesses and basically getting off the grid by becoming your own employer. I want to give that information out to people. But if you scroll all the way down to the very bottom of that page, you'll see a little video that says take the Five Days of Freedom Course. And just go in there and sign up. Just put your first name and email address in, and it will go through the whole process with a new lesson every day. And if you want to start your own business, it's a free course. It actually will set you up in five days and teach you how to start your own business online, which is really great. So you can be in control of your income. It's recession-proof, depression-proof, because, again, when you're self-employed, there's no one that could fire you at that point. You know, you're, you're in control of your, uh, your uh, future. So I would just recommend if you get the chance to take that. I think it's really beneficial for a lot of folks. Oh, that's awesome. That's, uh, I mean, giving them real stuff that they can use on the Internet to educate themselves and maybe even uh, uh, change their lives in terms of the way that they, uh, you know, make a living and and survive. It really has a lot to do with it, actually, you know, if you, the more control you can take of your life. Well, our guest is George Shepard. He's the publisher of Republic Magazine. And uh, we've got one more segment with them, which we're really happy that uh, we can still explore another 14, 15 minutes. So we'll be right back after these messages. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Freedom Above Fortune radio show. My name is Joe Bannister, agentfortruth.com, freedomabovefortune.com. Our guest is George Shepard. He's the publisher of Republic Magazine, and a um, couple, couple great uh, segments uh, prior to this. Uh, just to recap, uh, the websites that you can visit, uh, republicmagazine.com, that's the website for 
uh, George's uh, flagship magazine, Republic Magazine, and also tacticalprofits.com. Uh, George was just describing that as an opportunity for you to learn how to uh, start your own business. And then he was also mentioning um, the We the People Foundation's efforts uh, coming up here in October, the Liberty Walk. You can go to libertywalk.us. And um, the Articles of Freedom effort that occurred um, was that last year, <laughs> late last year, CC. 2009.us. All right. Well, um, George, let's uh, continue uh, with your fantastic ideas, um, sharing with the with my audience. Um, what other things can you can you uh, let them know about? Well, what I want to talk about right now is going to be um, some deep research. I'm also going to talk about uh, some activism tools, things that you can do to be active immediately. And then I got a really special announcement that I haven't told anybody yet. And again, this is another one of those uh, Freedom of Above Fortune debuts. We're going to debut this on Joe's show, which is really going to be fun. Um, first thing, when I get into the activism itself, when you want to become active, there's many different ways you can get active, whether it's you know, just striking up a conversation at your local bar or, your, say, your um, local uh, Lions group or whatever groups you might be involved in. Or you, you can actually pass that information to people. You can do that both uh, anonymously and with people knowing who you are. If you drop off magazines, you can drop off magazines or literature in places where people have to wait, you know, like doctor's offices, car mechanic shops, anywhere where you've, you've gone in there and picked up a magazine yourself. Think about this. If you're picking up magazines, how many other people are picking up magazines? I think that personally waiting areas are a great place to disseminate information, provided that it's not a bunch of, um, you know, religious pamphlets that you might put down in the middle of the table, because typically that stuff gets thrown away really quick. I've seen people come in and drop them down, and within a matter of minutes sometimes, uh, someone will come back in and clean that stuff up. But if you drop a magazine in a stack of magazines, typically they're going to stick around there. So you want to make sure that they're um, inconspicuous in their placement, and you can guarantee that there'd be, there'd be hundreds, if not possibly even thousands of people that could pick that magazine up and read it. That's one of the reasons why we came out with the idea of doing a Republic using an activist distribution method in the first, uh, first two years was all activist distribution. We didn't we did subscriptions, but we didn't actually have any newsstand orders. Uh, we just went on the newsstand in March of 2010. So we've only done a newsstand for you know, eight months-ish, and uh, we're already getting some really great response. So, But you can be active in other ways, too. Here's an idea. Here's a couple ideas for you. First thing is you can go to your local business card store if you'd like to go there. And it's, it's pretty cheap to do this. You can get 1,000 business cards, usually about 25 bucks. All you've got to do is on there just have them print very simply – Maybe one website, two website addresses, and maybe, say, even a tagline. You don't want to put too much information because too much information will freak people out. But you do something that's really kind of like ambiguous, but it's going to just make people go, hmm, what is this? You take these little business cards, and you can put them, of course, in people's uh, windshield wipers, but that usually goes, you get thrown away and create litter and stuff. What I like to do is you can put those, when you've when you got to fill up for gas, and everyone that drives a car has to fill up for gas they got those little credit card slots. You can drop your that business card, just slide it right in that credit card slot before you leave. And then before someone can put their credit card in, they got to pull that card out, which means they've got to read it. It's a great way, and this thing only costs like a penny, something like that. And, again, it only takes one person, which could wake up hundreds if not thousands of people. So that's one simple thing you can do you know, to be active, and it doesn't cost much money. Twenty-five bucks, you can get thousands of those things. Um, you can also create... Uh, flyers or pamphlets. Those pamphlets or flyers can be created like either from our digital magazines or from other things. You can go to the, uh, the library and, and photocopy books or pages or articles, and you can pass those things out. You can leave them in break rooms at um, you know, local uh, places you might work or uh, just places you might see where there might be a break room or something like that where people have to sit there and read something, provided that they don't get thrown away. Uh, a couple tips for where not to put stuff. Don't put stuff in magazine racks at, like, grocery stores and on newsstands. If you do that, what typically will happen is they'll see you either do that or when the person that comes and actually um, sells the, that magazine space, when you go to a, um, a convenience store or, a, like, a place where you buy groceries and, groceries and such, you'll see magazines, like, in one big thing. It's usually free magazines. Those are actually paid. People pay to put their magazines in those places, and they're stocked daily, if not every couple of days. 
and those people know exactly what's in there. So if you start putting a bunch of magazines or pamphlets or you know whatever it is in there, they're going to get thrown away, guaranteed. So don't put that stuff there because it's just a waste of, of money. There might be a few people that pick up the stuff, but for the most part, the majority of it's going to get pitched. So put it places, though, that may, they might not see it. You can go to a bookstore if you have a magazine, and you might be able to conspicuously slide the magazine in, provided that no one sees you. You can put it in with all the other stuff. Uh, you can also put information, like I said before, in places where people uh, attract. Pizza shops are great, like local mom pop stores and restaurants. You can put information there, whether you're picking up um, copies of the uh, uh, Sovereign newspaper. There's a lot of newspapers, too, out there that are really good, not just for public magazine. Um, there's the Sovereign. There's... Um, I'm trying to remember some of them. There's a lot. There's a lot of really great information out there that's been springing up, and I really, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, we're we'll able to put a little bit more of a uh, commercially accessible face on this message uh, in general. So you can do that. That's another way of, of great doing, uh, doing things very simply. You can also go do the stamp idea, like I mentioned earlier about the Ron Paul stamp. You can go down to any printing shop and you can get a stamp made, and that stamp could say anything. You could stamp your money. You can stamp anything. And it's a really, really great uh, way of, of disseminating information. Every time you send a letter out in the mail or a bill or anything, you, you can stamp it with red ink. Don't use black. Use red ink because it really stands out. Uh, another way is, by t- I love this one, it's $2 bills. I learned recently that you can take $2 bills, <laughs> and if you pay everything in $2 bills, you can order them from your, your local bank and they're free. You know, it's $2 bills, you just pay for the $2 for each bill. I mean, it's a great conversation starter, and I pay for it. When I go out to eat on the weekends, I go out to eat breakfast with my wife, and I'll pay my entire breakfast bill with $2 bills. And they always say, what are you doing with all these $2 bills? And I'll say, well, you know, I think a lot of people forget about our rights, and this is the only bill that has the, the signing of the Declaration of Independence on the back of it. It really means a lot to me. So I just this is my way of reminding people, and they say, that's really cool. Everyone collects $2 bills that I know of. At least that's what they tell me. So... It's it's just a really great conversation piece, and it's it's easy to do, and I think it's kind of fun to, to look at a lot of two dollar bills and pay your check. It's kind of a fun thing to do. <laughs> no one ever sees that. You're lucky to see one two dollar bill a year, you know. But um, we should be able to distribute those things out there and really have that message go out, and that's a fun thing. Uh, another thing, if you want to find out some deep research on somebody in general, say for example an elected politician, you want to find out what their home address is, their home phone number, things like that. You can find some of that stuff online, but I'll have to give you one resource real quick, and, and I go into a lot more of these resources at that Tactical Profits course I mentioned earlier. If you go to DomainTools.com, you can do a Who Is lookup. So say, for example, you know that your congressperson has you know, JoeBelow.com. That's their website. Or they might have a few websites. You can go to DomainTools.com and do a Who Is lookup for JoeBelow.com. What it will tell you is who's registered that domain name, what their address is, what their phone number is, what their fax machine. This is public record information that most people don't know about. So if you want to get in touch with some of these people that are avoiding you or they're just not easy to get a hold of, uh, call them at home and tell them how upset you are. Don't tell them where you found that information. But that's one way for them to say, hey, wait a minute, this guy's calling me at home. Holy crap. Uh, I better pay attention. Who else knows where I live? There's a lot of ways that you can get around stuff instead of just going through the normal channels. And I just want to say it's really important to be inventive and creative, especially with people that don't want you to find out their personal information. So they're elected officials. They don't have any right to privacy, in my opinion, anymore, as long as they're in their, in their public seat. The only right to privacy is when they're off the clock. But in general, I mean, if you're representing me, you're representing me, period. You're being paid well, and you've got a, a, a salary that's going to go on with a retirement pension plan. They, I mean, you should be paid, period. Uh, it, it's fine if you contact me. That, if I'm going to be in the in the public light like that, I would have no problem with that. Um, I want to also talk about a new thing that we're going to be launching, and this is a new magazine. Uh, we've actually decided to do a spinoff of Republic because right now with the, the crisis that everyone's going through, whether it's financial or um, just in general, there's a lot of people that are just going through hard, hard times. We decided to put a magazine together called Complete Survivalist. Complete Survivalist is coming out next month, which is November, uh, along with Republic. So if you get to republicmagazine.com and you subscribe right away, you actually get a free copy of the, of the premier issue of the magazine. We're going to send it out free to all our Republic Surprise subscribers. But it goes into a lot of survival topics. I literally am looking at this thing right now and I'm editing, uh, doing the final edits on the content. And we, we have uh, things about how to get antibiotics without a prescription. We've got um, all kinds of articles that are extremely, extremely useful, you know, such as... Um, you know, book reviews, information that you need to know about, what the real currency is going to be. If we have a post-collapse world, 
which you know, this financial system is doomed to fail. It's been since that they took us off the gold standard. What is the real currency going to be? And I think you'd be surprised to know that it might not be gold and silver. Most people think that that's what it's going to be, but it's really not. Uh, we talked about the Free State Project, which is really cool, uh, and networking locally. We talked about finding food when you're desperate. If desperate times happen, and which they more than likely will for a lot of people. Uh, where to find the food, uh, how, how to kind of get over some of your, your fears of eating things that you normally would think is below your social level. Um, a little bit about provi provi uh, preparedness and survivalism and self-reliance that people need to know about. We also talk a lot about homeschooling because, if, again, if the social structure collapses, well, how are your kids going to be educated? What's going to happen? You're going to have these kids running around the streets. There still has to be some kind of an educational system. So we talk about homeschooling, about withdrawing them from that system as it is right now and bringing them into the uh, – into a system that are actually going to learn something. Uh, what happens if there's a nuclear threat or a biological or terrorist threat? Uh, and a lot of things about going it alone. I mean, there's we talked a little bit earlier about people in this movement being kind of lone wolves. They, they want to do their own thing and um, kind of leave me alone and such. That's really not a great idea. If you think about what's the, what do they do to the prisoners when they do something bad? They put them in solitary confinement. You put someone in solitary confinement where they have no human contact for a long period of time, they will literally go crazy. You will have mental problems. And it's not a great idea for, um, for us to go this alone. We need to be connected with other people. We need to have, whether it's you know, a loved one or a sibling, whatever it might be, we need to know the people around us. And it's really important to build networks of local community folks that can basically be your backbone in case something very bad happens, which I think most people that are probably listening to the show can agree we're already in the midst of some things that are very bad that are happening. And it's only a matter of time before the house of cards comes crashing down uh, because the gusts of wind are really kind of whipping up around us. And it only takes but, uh, but one leg to fall in order to have the whole thing fall apart. So we're coming out with that new magazine, CompleteSurvivalist.com is the website. Uh, you can go there right now. We've got a whole training course on survivalism. But the magazine comes out uh, in November, and we're going to be going straight to the newsstand with it. We've already talked to our distributors, and they've accepted us. Uh, on the newsstand, so I'm hoping that we'll be in at least some bookstores by Christmas, and uh, you know, just keep on cranking out there. That's that's really good because I think that um, you know I don't. Uh, hopefully, there won't be a, a catastrophe. But whether we're talking about a natural disaster or even a uh, government engineered disaster like Obamacare or these different things, there may be a need, or even the schools, you know, and how there's so much complaints, and rightly so about our public school systems, um, this would be a great resource for people who, you know, in one way or another, or in many ways, need to, you know, detach themselves from uh, a particular system that they're attached to, public school, medical care, whatever it might be, uh, because actually being attached to that system is, is actually harmful to your health or to your freedom. So that, that's a phenomenal uh, idea. Well, okay, so CompleteSurvivalist.com is where people can learn more about um, that magazine. It's a brand new thing, so that's uh, cool that that's uh, been announced here. Uh, TacticalProfits.com was the website that dealt with uh, how to start your own business. And, of course, RepublicMagazine.com for the, uh, the flagship magazine that you founded a few years ago. Um, and uh, the Liberty Walk coming up, that's libertywalk.us, and Articles of Freedom um, information can be found at cc2009.us. Well, George, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing all this information. Uh, I always like uh, giving my listeners as much as they can, as they can get, and uh, you really packed a lot into one hour. So uh, we'll have you back again sometime, and thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, Joe. Take care. Okay. Take care. Okay. Take care. Okay. Take care. Okay. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second hour of the Freedom Above Fortune radio show. My name is Joseph Bannister, your host, agentfortruth.com and freedomabovefortune.com. Our guest for the second hour is Robert Schulz. He's the chairman of the We the People Foundation for Constitutional Education. And uh, actually, during the last hour with George Shepard, uh, we had mentioned uh, Bob and the Foundation. Uh, they have something called a Liberty Walk that's coming up in October, October 24th to be exact. Uh, you can go to libertywalk.us for more information. But uh, thankfully, we have uh, Bob Schulz himself on the phone. 
and uh, Bob, uh, welcome to the Freedom Above Fortune radio show. Hi, Joe. It is just hot water uh, to uh, be with you again, at least by telephone. <laughs> it's good to hear your voice. Thank you. Uh, same here. Um, well, Bob, you know, we, we only have you for an hour, uh, which minus commercials, about 45 minutes. Um, maybe you could go in a little more detail about what the Articles of Freedom are, you know, the Continental Congress that, um, that formulated it, you know, how you got to that point, and then the, uh, you know, we'll get into the status of it now. Um, so please, uh, you have the floor. Okay, first of all, uh, the Articles, uh, uh, the Continental Congress, uh, was held in November of last year, so November 2009, and there were 116 delegates that were elected uh, by the people in their states um, who met for 11 days uh, from all states except North Dakota and uh, Oklahoma. And uh, the, the product of their work is uh, titled The Articles of Freedom, The Works of Continental Congress 2009, and for all the information about the Continental Congress itself and the uh, delegates, they can go, uh, people can go to our website, well, they can go to uh, cc2009.us, cc2009.us, uh, to find out all about how the Continental Congress came to be and um, who was there, and they can actually watch um, videos of the proceedings uh, at the Continental Congress. They could see the delegates who were engaged in sometimes very intense discussions and debates and voting and so forth. Um, for the Articles of Freedom themselves, uh, folks can go to articlesoffreedom.us. And there, they can download a copy. It's a 53-page uh, document that, um, in sum, uh, deals with 14 violations of the Constitution uh, and includes instructions to both Congress and to the state legislatures to remedy those violations. So, I'll take a moment to, and just list the 14 articles that are embodied in this 53-page document. The first article deals with sovereignty, individual, state, and national sovereignty, and how it's uh, being eroded, and what uh, Congress and the state legislatures are instructed to do to, to uh, fix this problem. And then the second article um, deals with um, what we call uh, constitutional laws. Uh, what we're asking, uh, instructing the Congress and the state legislatures to do, establish committees, a committee in Congress and a committee in each of the uh, state legislatures, whose job it is to take each bill that is on its way to for signature by the president or by the governor, and to uh, comment, uh, see what the bill authorizes, uh, indicate, point to some provision of the uh, state or federal constitution that authorizes that uh, activity, that power by the government, and uh, or uh, declares that there's no authority for the government to uh, engage in that activity. So that's the second article. The third article deals with petitions for redress, the last ten words of the First Amendment, guarantee our right to petition for redress of grievances. And as you know, Joe, um, people have been petitioning. We, uh, in this foundation, have established a record, a 14-year record, where we have identified uh, We've served petitions for redress of grievances on all three branches. Each one of these petitions um, is a legal document that cites a provision of the Constitution that's being violated, includes a factual account of the violation, and seeks a remedy. And as you know, 
uh, the result is always the same. But no matter where we file those petitions, the result is no, no response. We get no response from the government. And so we're instructing the Congress and the state legislatures uh, to, um, uh, in the case of the federal Congress, to, to, to uh, revise, amend the um, rules of uh, civil and criminal procedure in their cases, uh, uh, in, their, in, the, in the federal law, to uh, make it very clear that um, any petition for redress of grievances dealing with a violation of the Constitution, uh, that that is to be heard on its merits. And any judge who fails to do so is to be removed. Um, any judge that dismisses a constitutional challenge for lack of standing is to be removed uh, from office. The fourth uh, article in the Articles of Freedom is entitled Militias, Firearms, and the Second Amendment. And uh, as you know, Joe, the, many people uh, overlook the first 13 words of the Second Amendment which say, in effect, that well-regulated militias are required, are essential, I think is the word in the, in the Second Amendment, are essential to the security of a free state. So, therefore, the absence of well-regulated militias in our states is unconstitutional because they are essential. Uh, and the, uh, the instructions to Congress uh, include uh, to repeal and get rid of the Department of Homeland Security and to work with the states and, and to, uh, to see that these uh, well-regulated, well-disciplined, uh, uh, well-trained militias are uh, established. Uh, and also to repeal all uh, federal gun control laws and all taxes and registration requirements on firearms and ammunition. The fifth article deals with privacy and uh, the Fourth Amendment. Uh, the sixth article uh, deals with pro uh, private property. Um, the seventh deals with juries uh, and the Seventh Amendment. And the eighth, the income tax and the Sixteenth Amendment. The ninth of 14 articles deals with foreign policy and the general welfare clause uh, of the preamble to the Constitution. And the tenth article deals with money in Article I of the Constitution. And the eleventh article deals with public debt and Article I of the Constitution. The Article 12 deals with the war powers provisions of Article uh, I and II of the Constitution. And Article 13 deals with eligibility. Uh, presidential eligibility, and the Natural Born Citizen Clause of Article 2 of the Constitution. And Article 14 of the Articles of Freedom deals with uh, illegal immigration and the uh, faithfully execute clause of Article 2. As you know, the President is required to faithfully execute all the laws uh, passed by Congress, including the immigration laws, which has not been the case now for, you know, for decades over many administrations. And so that's what the Articles of Freedom um, address, and, and um, there is a pledge at the back of the um, articles that we ask people to take, and um, the articles this year on April uh, 19th in the state, every state capital at the same moment in time, the articles were, there was a ceremony, and the articles were served on the two U.S. senators who have offices in the federal building in your state capitals, as well as the congressmen in whose uh, district the capital city lies. The governor and the leaders of the state legislature were served, and then many, many other people, uh, other elected officials, right down to the you know, county and town level, were served. People took the initiative to serve these articles. Um, and, um, it's, uh, you know, we're getting some sporadic um, reports that individual state legislators are talking about them, introducing them to other, you know, members of their state legislatures. And candidates, some candidates uh, are talking about them and 
you know, indicating their support. Um, but it's growing, and we are now asking people as a way to learn more about the Constitution uh, to meet uh, preferably every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock for an hour and a half to two hours, and each week uh, discuss uh, one more article of the 14 articles. And so over a 14-week period, they will have gone through these 14 provisions of the Constitution, learned about what the Constitution requires and how the, and how the Constitution is being uh, violated. And, um, and, uh, and then be in a much better position, of course, uh, having connected the dots between specific governmental behavior and the Constitution, a much better position to know how to vote, uh, where to cast their votes, and uh, how to defend their, their rights. Joe, I know we're coming up on a break uh, here in a minute or so. Um, so, uh, on the other side of the break, um, we can talk about uh, the some more or shift the focus to the Time Magazine, or the current issue of Time Magazine, uh, which features me, and we can talk about that. That'd be fantastic, Bob. Um, I'm, I just, you know, having watched uh, some of the footage, um, actually I, I participated in the uh, Continental Congress, uh, testified uh, via Skype, um, and so you know, I was happy to participate and at least give uh, some of my uh, insights, some of my experiences um, to the delegates there. And I know you had many other uh, fine speakers, and uh, you know the, the the thing was packed with with evidence and facts, and um, you know. Uh, and people can see your uh, uh, testimony before the delegates of Continental and Congress by going to cc2009.us. Oh, fantastic! And as, as as usual, you know, uh, we we do these things, and they're they're taped and uh, recorded. And I never know uh, <laughs> how it looks, but it, as if I could change it anyway. Um, so it's an outside, and thank you for the effort. <laughs> but it, it's really a phenomenal, um, you know, what you've done to try to synthesize this massive uh, tyranny that's going on and expose it for what it is. And, you know, all you're doing, is, as you've said many times, is comparing... You know what the Constitution authorizes to what our uh, federal and state governments are doing, and you're simply pointing out the, the comparison between the two, and uh, always letting the people decide. And uh, you know, I guess the government's forgotten that a, a government of, by, and for the people would involve the people <laughs> in terms of you know their perspective on on whether the government's actually uh, obeying the Constitution and the law. So uh, I'm very happy that you could come on and uh, tell the listeners about this. And we are uh, about to hit a break here. Uh, so when we come back, we're going to continue with Robert Schulz. He's the chairman of the We the People Foundation for Constitutional Education. And uh, this is a fascinating story. It's an ongoing story. Um, I'm sure there's many chapters yet to be written. So thank you for joining us all, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. These messages, these messages, these messages. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to uh, the second segment of the second hour of the Freedom Above Fortune radio show. My name is Joe Bannister, your host, agentfortruth.com and freedomabovefortune.com. Our guest is Robert Schulz. He's the chairman of the We the People Foundation for Constitutional Education. Uh, Bob has spent decades um, working with the foundation in trying to um, oh get the government to obey the Constitution, and that's a, a, a tall order and a big job. And so during the last uh, segment, Bob was describing the Articles of Freedom that was uh, produced by the Continental Congress 2009 uh, group that uh, met in Illinois. And so, Bob, uh, if you'd like to continue... Um, talking about that and then uh, branching into, uh, you know, where things stand right now, uh, what you're 
hopes and goals are for how this article, the Articles of Freedom, can be utilized by the citizens to, uh, uh, you know, inform our government officials about what they're supposed to be doing? Yeah, it, it's uh, our hope that um, that the Articles of Freedom will be useful in, in many ways. Uh, certainly, that those in elected office uh, and those candidates. Uh, we'll look them over and um, and we'll you know keep them in mind as they take their oaths um, of office. But also, there's a lot in there for people. Um, I've observed over many years that, unfortunately, uh, the people, Joe, have they're not very well informed about their rights. And of course. Um, if they're not very well informed about their rights, then it's difficult for them to, to defend them. And the truth is what makes us free. And so people need to know uh, what's in the Constitution. They, they need to know what the War Powers Clauses are all about. Uh, they need to know what all of these other provisions, these restrictions and prohibitions and mandates um, include, because each one of them is an individual right. We have a, for instance, we have an individual right to a government that does not apply the armed forces of the United States in hostilities overseas without a declaration of war or some authorization by Congress. That's an individual right that we have. We have an individual right to a government that does not invade our privacy and that does not take private property for private use, which is something they've begun to do. We have an individual right against a government that imposes a direct, unapportioned tax on our labor, and so forth. Um, so the Articles of Freedom... Um, cover 14 provisions of the Constitution, 14 uh, provisions that are being violated with evidence. You know, they not only cite the provision, but they offer a factual account of the violation and then instruct the government, uh, both Congress and the state legislatures, uh, to take certain actions, specific instructions to remedy, designed to remedy these violations. So wouldn't it be wonderful? I mean, more and more people seem to be talking about the Constitution, but the articles become a um, become a constitutional study course. And we're recommending that that uh, groups um, commit to meet every week for 14 weeks, and that each week for an hour and a half to two hours they discuss, they go through each of these articles one by one, and we provide. Uh, on the uh, articlesoffreedom.us website, we provide everything they need, all the study guides, everything they need uh, to go through a one and a half to two hour uh, session each week on uh, each on each article. So it's, anyone can do this. They they don't have to be experienced educators. They don't have to be experienced and competent public speakers. Um, Everything they need to go through a study um, is provided for them. And uh, so we're hoping people will do that. And, of course, that elected officials will take them seriously. Um, and, of course, the appropriate next step um, is, uh, in my opinion, critical mass. Um, first we've petitioned them, now we've instructed them. And if the government continues or refuse to comply, then the people have the right of enforcement. They have the right, for instance, to impose economic sanctions on the government. So the appropriate next step uh, might be something like that. So that's the articles. People can find out all about the Continental Congress um, that produced the Articles of Freedom last November uh, by going to cc2009.us, Continental Congress. Uh, just the initials cc2009.us, and then they can go to articlesoffreedom.us uh, and obtain copies, download copies 
uh, of the articles and all of the uh, study guide material for um, to study these week by week. So, uh, if we can shift our attention, Joe, I'd like to talk about the current issue of Time Magazine. I, I would certainly love to jump into that because it uh, <laughs> you must be uh, being very effective. Uh, no surprise to me. But whenever the uh, so-called mainstream media uh, takes notice of um, our, our efforts, <laughs> uh, we'd like to think that it's because they'd like to uh, inform the American public about about things, you know, and do it in a way of reporting as opposed to mm -hmm. agenda mongering. Mm -hmm. And yet, unfortunately, with that article, it seems like that's exactly what has occurred. So please uh, explain to the listeners, um, you know, how uh, how biased uh, Time Magazine is and what things they said to you that they didn't end up uh, following up on. Before I do that, I'm, I'm reminded, if you don't Am I saying so, Joe? I'm reminded of Rahema Ellis and uh, when she worked for CBS and how she contacted you many years ago. And um, I'm sure you sensed at the time, as I did when Time contacted me, that gosh, uh, you know, this is a, a um, this is a uh, mainstay the, of the media. This is an institution. This is a you know highly regarded one of the main networks, um, this is the dominant media, nothing but uh, uh, credible journalists, and uh, here upcoming is your opportunity to tell your side of the story, and I remember well <laughs> what, um, uh, what she did um, in uh, reporting on her interview with you, and um, uh, it didn't turn out the way uh, you and I and others had hoped. But here I am. Uh, I was contacted uh, by time. Uh, I was going to give a speech in Albany, and they contacted me and said they were going to be there and, and would like to interview me afterwards. So I gave the speech, and then we had a three-and-a-half-hour interview, and then we had another three-and-a-half-hour interview a couple of weeks, two or three weeks after that in, in Albany, uh, in New York City. And... Uh, emailed, you know, some information, sent some documents, um, and we were talking about the right to petition. We were talking because he asked. He wanted to know about my background, where I came from, and education, and and, um, and then, of course, we talked about the right to petition and our petitions and how the government wasn't responded. I mean, gosh, we conveyed the whole story uh, to Barton Gelman, um, and I looked him up. You know, I was impressed. I said, oh, gosh, we really got an opportunity here um, to get our story out. This is a, a highly accomplished journalist. He uh, spent 20 years with the Washington Post. He then moved over as a contributing editor uh, to Time, but after writing and publishing a book about um, Mr. Uh, uh, Vice President Cheney, which in 2008 uh, got the uh, garnered the um, uh, award from New York Times for the best nonfiction book of the year, and uh, also by the LA Times that year. And um, and he told me off the bat that he's not interested and in, he likes to write long stories, and that he was. Uh, and I said, well, what do you you know what triggered your interest now? Is this your idea or your editor's idea? And he says, no, it's my idea. And um, what I'm looking for is the substance in this patriot movement. And there's a lot of rhetoric on both sides. And so I'm, I'm looking for substance. And we proceeded. Well, <laughs> when this story came out, I was stunned. Uh, the title of it is Locked and Loaded, The Secret World of Extreme Militias. It's the, it's the uh, cover story this week, the October 11th issue. And I'm featured in it towards the, um, I don't know, the last fifth of the article or whatever, but it and, and but I don't understand why I'm <laughs> featured in this story. Um, you know, they they I'm not a member of a militia. I don't communicate with any. I don't uh, I don't influence any that I know of. I don't, you know, it, it's it's remarkable. He's taken totally out of context and, and clearly misquoted. And, and um, 
fortunately, I have some emails that I've sent him that I can that I can uh, prove these things. Um, it's just a, a, a story that uh, wholly mischaracterizes me and the work of the foundation, and they just sort of shoehorn me into this piece that I say may, you know may work for them, but has no relevance to what uh, Gelman and I uh, discussed, and. Um, uh, you know, there's so many falsehoods that I've uh, sent last night, overnight, mail to Time Management, um, the managing editor of Time, um, nine of these falsehoods, and said, look, I'm looking for a, uh, a retraction and an apology on each one of these. And um, this, may, this whole matter may end up in court. I mean, it's libelous. It's, uh, yeah, par for the course. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, 60 Minutes, uh, when they wanted to interview me, uh, they claimed that they wanted some video footage of me just being a dad and just being a regular American. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the same thing as far as telling us, you know, the purp- their purpose was to, you know, explain the, the roots of what's going on. And, and then when it gets to the airwaves or the, the actual print, uh, it's anything but. And it just happens over and over and over again. And people like yourself or me or many other people sincerely pour out our hearts, you know, pour out the information, pour out the facts, and then they ignore the facts or just, you know, cherry pick in order to advance their agenda. And uh, it it just, I, I hope that my listeners who aren't aware of this manipulation that goes on in the media uh, will look into your story um, as, as it pr- progresses. And, uh, so yeah. we're going to, pardon me for interrupting, I know we're coming up on a break, but um, what I wanted to say was we're posting an article on our website uh, today so people, if they're not on our mailing list now, they can just go to givemeliberty.org and, um, and then uh, click on the uh, We the People Foundation or go directly to wethepeoplefoundation.org and read the article and read a response that I've uh, begun to disseminate uh, to that article. I'm not yet uh, ready to uh, post the piece that I overnighted last night uh, to the time management uh, about these falsehoods. I'll give them an opportunity to uh, to respond. Um, But at least, uh, you know, my response to the article uh, can be seen and um, and the article itself can be read. There's a link there. So it's givemeliberty.org, and um, just go to wethepeoplefoundation.org. Okay, fantastic. Well, our guest is Robert Schultz. He's the um, chairman of We the People Foundation for Constitutional Education. Uh, taken a lot of arrows in the back over the years for, for his efforts, and uh, we commend him for that. And yet, staying uh, you know peaceful and nonviolent, uh, contrary to what they try to paint in their their articles. Uh, anyway, we'll be right back with Robert Scholes. Uh, please join us after the break. After the break. After the break. After the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the final segment of the second hour of the Freedom Above Fortune radio show. My name is Joe Bannister, your host. AgentForTruth.com and FreedomAboveFortune.com. You can read more about uh, what I've been up to and what I plan to be up to in the future. And our guest is Robert Schultz. He's the chairman of the We the People Foundation for Constitutional Education. Uh, Bob has talked about, uh, over the last hour, the Articles of Freedom that was produced by the Continental Congress in 2009 in Illinois last year as well as the um, Liberty Walk. We're going to be talking about that now. Um, also the, uh, the media, the Time Magazine article, which is the current issue. Uh, I think Bob said October 11th issue. And if you go to time.com, uh, is the Time Magazine website, and uh, that's where I saw the article. Um, you know, I don't know how much longer they're going to let us uh, view this stuff uh, for free, uh, I don't like to give them a penny of my money <laughs> if I can help it. So I was able to get the uh, the article there. Uh, I guess they have enough advertising um, that you have to be uh, subjected to to uh, 
to justify the, the free access. But anyway, you can go to time.gov and see the article that Bob was talking about where uh, the Time um, correspondent, Barton Gelman, who I've seen also on CNN, uh, tells Bob one thing in terms of what his uh, agenda is and what his intentions are, and then the article comes out and it's completely different than what uh, Mr. Gelman uh, led Bob to believe. So that's uh, pretty typical uh, that we, in our own experience, our own personal experience with the so-called mainstream media, uh, check it out for yourself and see that maybe the uh, mainstream media is um, promoting an agenda as opposed to reporting the news uh, so that you can you can decide for yourself. Anyway, Bob was going to uh, spend the final segment uh, talking more about the Liberty Walk. Uh, that's something that's coming up here at the end of October. So, Bob, uh, please uh, let the listeners know what this Liberty Walk is all about. Okay, it's a first of all, it's a national event, um, but the vision is to organize have people step up and organize local Liberty Walks. Uh, from coast to coast, celebrating uh, the Constitution um, through our assembly and, and speech and, and song. So it's October 24th, Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock in every time zone. 1 o'clock in, in uh, California and 1 o'clock in Maine. Um, so we're uh, sort of coordinating this. Uh, we know time is short, but we thought it would be good to do this before uh, the elections. Um, you know, inspire people to give their thought to the Constitution and, and think about these things that they'll be hearing about as they step into the uh, voting booth. This is a non-political, non-partisan event. Uh, incumbents, candidates are certainly more than welcome to walk with the people humbly, but walk with the people, but not to take the stage, not to give their political speeches. Um, so picture, you know, uh, I, what we need people to do right now, uh, Joe, is to step forward. It's very, very easy. Uh, not a lot of tr tremendous time involved on their part, uh, but to step forward and identify a place in their town where people can gather to kick off a one-mile walk, more or less, um, and then a landing point where a ceremony could be held. So a 30-minute walk and a 30-minute uh, powerful ceremony. And uh, everything they need, once they've done that, is provided for them. Uh, the website is libertywalk.us. And it'll be ready, uh, fully functional, fully ready. It's up there now, but uh, everything that people will need will be there by tomorrow. Uh, I think this uh, um, this interview will will run on Saturday, I believe, Joe. So yes. um, it'll be up by the time people hear your uh, this broadcast. And um, so the program will be there. Uh, there'll be a file for people to download and. And we're, we're asking people to leave their signs at home, just carry a copy of the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, and to have just one banner um, stretched out in front of the group that's walking, um, and on the banner, the words, Obey, obey the Constitution. Um, and there are pledge. We're asking people to have three flags, uh, uh, you know, at the ceremony place, and... Um, pledge the flag, have songs to America, and then a short message, uh, which will be up on the website, uh, for uh, to be read at each of these um, events. Um, so tomorrow, uh, those who um, are ready to just uh, help out, uh, identifying the, the place so that other people can go to the website and find out where to go, where to join the walk. Um, and they'll be able to post on the website tomorrow the location and um, and all the details about their local walk. Um, so we ask people to walk the walk. Um, we ask, uh, you know, let, let the purpose. Uh, it, it's a one day, one hour, one mile, one people coming together for America 
for the Constitution and for freedom. And let's find out uh, how many of us there are. You know, it's one thing for three or 400,000 people to go to Washington because they can afford the time or the money, um, but we know there are many, many more uh, people who are very vitally concerned about the direction the country's going and the deviations from, uh, you know, our Constitution with its creator guaranteed, creator endowed rights. Um, and, uh, but let's find out how many we are. Let's start building critical mass. Um, let's all be strengthened by our time together. Let's get organized, neighbor to neighbor, community to community. And let's get come together again and again. Let's do it again after this one and again and begin to show our numbers one hour. Let's send a message to, that uh, every person who will not honor the Constitution and their oath of office should not be in office. And let's take responsibility to hold our elected officials accountable. And let's commit to learn about the Constitution and our individual in inalienable natural rights. And so, you know, bottom line, let's all become freedom keepers for, for liberty and for future generations and, and for all mankind. Let's okay. not forget the cause of America is still the cause of the world. And so, um, we ask people to step up. We do need these organizers in every city and town. We, we're all set here in Glens Falls, New York. Um, and uh, we need people to step up and become the organizers and, and get that information up on the website. Um, all the organizer materials, including the event guidance document, the customizable flyers and lyrics and program event handouts and so forth, uh, will be there under the uh, organizer resource tab on the website. And of course, we encourage everyone to promote the event through you know Facebook, emails, and so forth. And um, uh, and we ask people, you know, to have a counter. Somebody, you know, coming up with a, a count of the number of people present, and pass those on. We provide an email to, for them to do that, so that we can report on just how many people are coming together in these liberty walks uh, for America. So the whole idea is to uh, allow people to put their patriotism to the test. I uh, couldn't, couldn't agree more, and uh, sadly, as you know, I'm uh, almost 48 years old, but it seems like uh, you know my generation and the one before it, we uh, put uh, a lot of trust in our government officials that they were minding the store, and uh, I'm afraid they were uh, taking all the merchandise out the back door <laughs> when we weren't looking, and so it really is important for everybody listening uh, it's time to step up to the plate and, and join your fellow Americans and see that uh, uh, the people we hired to, to mine the store for us have been taken out everything out the back door and, uh, and the store is nearly empty. And so we really, we really are right, in, in bad shape. But, uh, we have a few minutes left, Bob, in the show, and I wonder if you could just briefly touch on, um, I guess, a recent, you know, the IRS is always trying to harass all of us for uh, bringing this information to the public, uh, but any, any little facts you can share regarding uh, your most recent uh, IRS harassment? Yeah, it's ongoing. Um, you know, they brought a, a, civic, a civil action against uh, the distribution of the petition for redress regarding withholding the so-called blue folder which we handed out for free, you know, under our right of free speech and so forth. But they brought a civic action under the 6700 provision of the, of the uh, code, claiming we were promoting an abusive tax shelter, and they just ramrodded that right through. I've never seen anything like it. Um, clearly a violation of due process. There was no hearing. There was no strict scrutiny of our fundamental First Amendment right of speech and petition. And they got what they wanted, you know, and then, um, and then based on that uh, court decision, they then revoked uh, our tax exempt status retroactive to 2003 and converted our 990 not for profit tax returns to an 1120 for profit, 
uh, added $100,000 to the revenue we had that year, uh, ignored uh, all of the expenses uh, we had laid out on our tax forms that we always filed on time, and uh, assessed us a tax and uh, served a notice of deficiency when they knew I was out last year uh, lecturing in 88 cities and 50 states. Our mail was being held by elderly neighbors. Didn't know about it until I got back. It was too late to do anything about it. They then assessed the tax, and, um, you know, and, and so I, in the end, I had gone to a, uh, applied for a collection due process hearing. The appeals unit um, made all the arguments, and he said, nope, uh, he determined that we have no money. And so we're, we've applied to tax court, and that's where it'll be argued next. So that's a, in short, I know we've got a break or the end of the show here um, right about now, Joe. So I like to get into it further with you, but I think we're out of time. Yeah, no, and it's uh, it just people need to know that um, you know we are we are taking arrows uh, uh, in the back as we're <laughs> speaking to people in front of us. Uh, we're, we're, we're yanking those arrows out every chance we get so that we can keep on going. Um, well, maybe just in these final uh, minute or two, uh, let people know uh, how they can support the foundation uh, financially, and then just maybe a recap of the um, of the, uh, uh, the websites so that people can, can join af- after the show. Right. Well, our, our main website has always been GiveMeLiberty.org, but now if you go there, uh, you'll see these main buttons of other, uh, other websites. The foundation uh, is WeThePeopleFoundation.org. The We The People Congress is WeThePeopleCongress.org. The Congress. Then there's a website that people can link to for CC 2009, one for the Articles of Freedom. And yes, uh, we could use donations. Uh, it's actually not a very good year for us. We could use all the help we can get. We're carrying on with uh, lawsuits uh, against these machines that count our votes in secret. We're in discovery on that project, and of course, we're uh, in the thick of it on uh, the AIG and $700 billion bailouts. Those are two lawsuits, um, plus all this other stuff we're doing. So we can use all the help we can get. But more importantly, people should uh, sign up, and let's, uh, let's begin to show our fellow Americans and the government just how many of us there really are that are concerned about the fact that our Constitution is hanging by a thread. Fantastic. Well, uh, yes, uh, all my listeners, you know, the We the People Foundation is attacking multiple fronts, and there's multiple fronts that need to be uh, monitored and, and attacked because it's really a full court press against uh, against us. So I'm really grateful to Robert Schultz uh, for coming to join us uh, for this hour, and we'll have you back again soon, Bob. Uh, thanks for everything you do for for us Americans. God bless you, Joe. Keep up the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. And everybody, have a good week. And we'll talk to you next week. We'll talk to you next week. We'll talk to you next week. We'll talk to you next week.